Okay, everybody, welcome back to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. Got fresh, hot coffee, and although it's in the afternoon, we already, and I'm looking up at y'all, we, um, we already did one part with jelly plating today, and now we're going to do use some of the cards that we jelly plated to make some art cards. The reason that we got this kind of setup going right now is that my tripod, my stick, and all my setup for the camera is in the other room set up for the uh, finishing up the mural. I should be able to finish it up like in one more part, but that's why we got this kind of weird angle thing going on. All right, so thanks everybody for being here. Uh, I was just saying, I got a couple of inks. I got a bucket of stamps here, and I, I even have some of these I haven't used yet. This one, this had the alphabet with it, I believe was all one, and I took the alphabet off. These are the Prima ones. They were on clearance at Hobby Lobby a couple months ago, and you can see I haven't even used them yet, but they were so cool. I think they were only like a couple dollars, and, uh, and it had the small typewriter alphabets with it, so you can kind of see there what the... So, you know, I'm just saying I'm, I don't use my stamps as often as I should. Same for these I might use. These are a nice little, um, and I don't know who made these either. These are some different leaves, um, branches, and twigs. Stampendous comes to mind, but I can't swear to it. So I'm thinking, well, I think I'll leave those out because those would be good on what we did the jelly plating cards with. But I do want to make some kind of a story, at least a little bit of a story that, at least to use your imagination on a story. These are like the kind of art cards that I usually make, collage, mixed media cards. This one's already been varnished, so you're going to see a shine to it. But we made these on the last art card, as we, you know, the title of the title of the show was. So this is one of the ones that was left over. The rest of them I sent to okay, did Inka Dinka Do. That's what it was, Miko. Yeah, Inka Dinka Do. You're right. That just like rung a bell. Anyway, uh, so I gave the rest of them away except two. So um, those are the kind of cards that I like. I call them art cards. These are four by six postcard size. But I also make the three by four, and even I have them right here. Even some two by, I got a rubber band around them, some two by two size. And I showed these on the last show, so I won't show them again. But what I'm reaching for right there is on the wall, I have a, uh, I think it was a jewelry holder. It's a jewelry roll up thing and it's plastic pockets and there's like maybe about 40 35 40 different pockets on it it's hanging on the wall like literally right there and I keep all my art cards all right there except they're separate from my project life cards my project life cards have their own designated shelves in their little um, core kit I slide out the core kits they're all stacked up vertically because I like to flip. I don't like stacks. So I, the core kits of my project life is over there. I, I've shown a little bit of my room before. So, okay. So this is one of my small bins of stamps. Hang on. I have two small I call them, these are what I keep my smalls in. The rest of my stamps are kept in page protectors with a piece of cardstock between them so that you can keep both sides. And these are stacked up in a box like this. So I can flip. I can flip through the different page protectors with the cardstock. This is how I keep most all my stamps. I have a few wood ones, probably maybe. I know there's probably more up there than I think. There might be 50 up there, small ones. But all the rest of my wood mounted stamps, I put in the microwave and demount it so that I could keep them like this. 
I just didn't have room for tons and tons of wooden stamps. Although I have two printer trays right up there on the wall with the smaller stamps and some inks and some other little doodads on the wall right there. But all, most all my stamps are in page protectors like this, front and back, in a, in a big box behind me. The smaller ones I keep, just because I don't want them to get lost, I keep the smaller ones in, like here's the one of the Heidi Swap sets. These are like for Project Life. And they're small. They're out of the they're out of the package, but I wanted to keep it so I could see them there. So these are smalls, like tiny for little cards, art cards, greeting cards, which I don't make greeting cards. I've I've made a few, but I don't really make cards. But I use them in Project Life, scrapbooking, art cards, and that sort of thing. So these are my smalls. Like here's another couple different ones. Here's some small words. Here's another small, I'm going to put it on the white so you can see it. So these kind I keep in here, although I do have a couple other things in here, like here's one of my hand carved ones. Uh, here's another one, here's a gargoyle carved one. So I keep a few other things in here too, carved ones and stuff. That uh, and, and here's like a bag of alphabets, here's some alphabet ones. And, um, you know, a few in here. There's a pea pod that I carved. Here's another fancy alphabet. And I keep those in bags. And I showed y'all last, and, you know, a block. I keep a block in here. One of these kind of uh, date stamps. And then tinier, even tinier little ones like, you know, ink thing here. Um, here's a word or a doodle little things like that, another small ink block. So these are like real tiny, tiny ones too, along with another set of the Prima ones that, like here's a watch, that will be a good one to use. Maybe I'll pull this one out today. Uh, some little borders, and these were on sale, these were on clearance actually. These were on clearance, but these have tiny little things like, look at this tiny little key. See how tiny? But that's good for like repetitive designs. Here's another pocket watch. Maybe we'll pull that out. This is a little terrarium under glass. Um, so these were, like I said, these were on clearance at Hobby Lobby a couple months ago. These two sets. There's a little teapot, which by the way, I almost bought this set when it was on clearance. I almost bought it again. <laughs> I said, oh, that teapot's so cute. I went, wait a minute. I think I have that. And then anyway, a tiny little bee. So some of these I just use and I have in this little basket because they're so tiny. A little bird, a chair. And so a couple of my daubers. Now, a little while ago, I was wanting a dauber, but the spa, uh, sponsor. And now I have one of these daubers, but this would have been the same kind of design that we did on the jelly plate thing. But here's what I do with these. I don't know how everybody else uses them, but I don't dab them in the, like, um, I don't like dab them on here on the ink pads and then use them around the edge. I have like maybe, I think I have three of them. I have these, I, have, I think I have three of these. But what I do... Get my thing here. It's like here's a bottle of the my archival refill. I just squeeze some on there and make it like a little mini ink pad. So I just put a couple drops of ink on there if I want to use it like something really tight and close. So I don't like dab this in something. I did I put the ink on there like that. Okay. All right, so the other thing I was going to show, well, then there's that. Okay, then I just wanted to show you how I store my stamps in page protectors. So, yeah, so I do have a couple of these cool Prima. Uh, this one I haven't even used at all. And then I just keep random things in here, like things that I really like. Like, I love this big 
these plastic uh, foamy like stamps that you use with paint. Yeah, yeah, there are a couple of Prima ones that were on clearance, Linda. Um, here's a tiny, there's the tiny Prima alphabet, typewriter alphabet. And then here's uh, the, you know, the thing on the violin, the, the, the arm thing. I hand carved, I'll have to show you all that, I hand carved that. Uh, here's another watch. And a bunch of different things in here, like this is a foam. These are just little things that I like. Um, but there's tons of little stuff in here, as you can see. This is all little stuff in here. Um, although there's a feather. I like that feather. I'm just kind of thinking of what I might want to use on art cards. But I just have like a bunch of my hand carved stuff in here. Here's a skeleton. Maybe we need to use him. I had this from a couple years ago. Uh, I think Michael's had him on clearance for like, I don't know, a fret. Yeah, a fret. Is that right? The fret? Thanks, Karen. Um, these things right here, these are good for backgrounds and decorations on art cards. Um, here's a couple more of the Prima things. There's a little car. I think Dar used this on my card. Dar, did you see where I showed my card you made me? Let me grab it again in case y'all missed it. I think I got it right here. Oh, I can't reach it. Oh, sorry guys, I can't reach it right now. I showed it on the last show. Uh, oh, let me show y'all this too again. This was Paula's idea, and I showed it on the last stream for alphabet stamps. For alphabet stamps, Paula had this idea. She was walking around, I don't know, Canadian Tire or whatever store she was at. But these are ammo cases that you keep bullets in. <laughs> but look, all your stamps can be alphabetized and kept in these little ammo cases. And they all stay, because they're each one's a little square. There's a little square for each one. And they have different sizes. These are a little bit, but there you can see in that one. So these are perfect. Yeah, I showed it last stream. Okay, for some reason I froze for just a second. Hang on, guys. I froze for just a second. I don't think I went away, but I froze for a minute. I showed it on, I think, two streams ago, Dar. Everybody had a fit over it, of course. Anyway, so you can use these ammo cases for your little alphabets. Uh, I'm just kind of digging through thinking I might like this damask design. Mm -hmm. Here's the little checkerboard. That's a cool design. There's another little damask design. And I like these little cheap ones that have these cool little designs like this. These are like the little dollar ones that come on a little sheet of dollars stamps. I know, that not that a great idea? That was Paula's idea. Oh, and if y'all ever want to carve your own, I've shown a few shows where we've carved our own stamps. But the best, if you just want to carve some small ones, i got to kind of remember to keep looking up there, y'all, because I try to watch chat and look up there is these are the magic rub erasers the white erasers they're called magic rub and they're the softest easiest stuff to carve into so if you want to do any carving rubber stamp carving the magic rub and you can buy them in boxes of like i, I don't know how much they are now but back when i bought a box or two of them they were like uh i don't know five dollars for 20 or I don't know how many but those are the easiest ones to carve into um, this is the very first one car uh, stamp that Lisa ever made and it I'll show you I'll stamp this one out for you too she carved me out a moon pie Lisa did so I'll pull that out to show y'all what else is in here then I have little foam ones here's a little palm reader hand that's kind of cute 
um, lots of butterflies. I do have a couple of wood ones in here, like the star that I used. I got a couple stars. There's a thing that says ink. Here's another, um, like a good texturing grid. I even have a little piece of a stencil in here. This set I got, I don't even know how many years ago, at the uh, stamp convention. I'm saying 10 years ago. There's no date on it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's 2004, 10 years ago. And I love this. Now, part of it's missing the letters. I'm sure they're in here. But I love this set. The, this is alphabets in different uh, first forms of letters. And it's in here somewhere. But I love this set. And I'm sure it probably cost 20 bucks back in the day because it was hard to, you know, stamps were expensive when they first came out. Before acrylics, they were rubber stamps, and these are even unmounted. Um, what else is in here? Here's another foam stamp. That's good for backgrounds. I'm just digging through here, guys, trying to see some things that I might want to use on our art cards where we've already jelly plated on the last you know an hour ago so there's just all kinds of just little you can see here little stamps postage stamps designs the stars hearts borders I've carved a lot. I, you know, here's my initials I carved. Uh, I've carved a lot. Okay. So I think I've got enough stuff pulled here to start using. Oh, question. The lady that designed those stamps is an awesome stamp. Oh, the one that designed these, Eileen, is an awesome stamp teacher. I don't know if it's got the name on it. It's, it's a stamp in the hand is the company. Out, out of California, which I think all the rubber stamp uh, people started out in California with uh, art, I mean, uh, mail art and stuff. I have tons of old catalogs from way back, like 1995 and before, and I just love the catalogs. I still have them. Uh, oh, here's my big B. I'll pull out my B stamp. I love my B stamp. That's one of them. That's the big one. I have a smaller one, too. But I just kind of throw them all in. Here's a barcode. I just kind of throw them all in here and kind of dig around and play. That's a cool one there. All right, so let me move this one, this set out of the way, and all my letters. These are not all the letters I have, but these are the smaller ones that will fit in those little ammo boxes. And that's just such a great idea, Paula. All right, so let me move this out of the way for now. Because I'll just be bumping it. And let me move my ammo cases. So I have a little room next to me. And yeah, so that's how I store my acrylic stamps and all my demounted ones is in those page protectors with cardstock between it, except for the few that I have up here on the wall. Eileen, you have everything. You are the enabler elf, Eileen. You have everything. I mean, y'all should see her, her uh, die cuts, her, like, the actual, like, hard dies, you know, the dies that you run through, the big shots and all. Yeah, her and Mitzi, I would like to see like a, a dueling, a dueling something between her and Mitzi as far as supplies. All right, so before this show, hope y'all can see, let me fix my little, I have my little blanket thing here I sit on because it covers up the arm. My arms of my chair are all uh, duct taped. This chair now, I was telling the girls last recording, the hydraulics, like, sunk down 
and it and it's like drags the ground. So when I try to move my chair, I'm like scraping the. It doesn't matter. It's an old carpet that I have down here, so that uh, when I spill paint and all, but it uh, it uh, scrapes the floor. So I can't like just roll. It's on wheels, and I can't even roll. All right. So here's the cards that we made earlier, and I want I did want to stamp a couple of these things to show y'all here in a minute that we made on the Jelly Plate show uh, uh, an hour or so ago. And so I'll kind of show y'all these. And what I want to do, usually when I make art cards like this, I start with the collage and work the paint around it and blend. And I probably will still do that. I don't know how much paint will end up still being here with the, when I'm done with these, uh, from the Jelly Plating, I mean. But, you know, I usually do tear out mixed media different kind of collage elements and then blend with paint now having started going to start on an already done background if i do want to keep any of the jelly plate design i'm going to have to fussy cut out things like for instance this watch let's just for an example um let me get my little scissors where are my little scissors my big scissors, where's my little scissors? Put stuff my hand in the paint. Um, I've got some small scissors here somewhere. Buried under here. I feel them. There they are. So, all right, here's a bird head. That's a better example. So, if I want to keep all of this design, because it's painted first instead of second, I get one of those slick. Miniature. Yeah, I could do that. That's a good idea. Sunset Carol, who, by the way, is the one that gave us the idea to put our matte medium in a Dawn dishwasher bottle. Brilliant. She just told me I need to get one of those chair uh, sliders and put it on that circle part under my hydraulics that's touching the ground. That's a good idea. Or because my poor chair is so beat up, I could just get a new chair. I'm going to put in a request at Christmas. Okay. So anyway, uh, to keep all this design, if I was going to do it this method, I would just be tearing out like this much of a bird head, matte meeting them it on, and painting it in to blend in. But to do that, I'm going to lose all of this coolness. So I will have to fussy cut out my designs to use on the pretty background. Does that, y'all get what I'm talking about? Vern, as Paul would like to say. Um, if I just use my regular method of tearing out and gluing on and blending, that works perfect. I love it, it's my favorite method. But then you don't, you, you're defeating the purpose of using a design. So you have to fussy cut out to put something on the card. Otherwise, you're just going to be blending out all the stuff we just did with the jelly plate. Okay? But because this is acrylic paint only at this point, I can still jelly, I mean, I can still matte medium glue my collage elements down in the same way that I do glue down on the art cards. If y'all wanna see I made this one and all the other, like I think we did eight that day, just go back about maybe a week and you'll see art cards and I'll show y'all how I make this and a whole bunch more. And I usually just give them away during the day, during the show. Okay, sip of coffee here. So I pulled out a bunch of the stamps here to do some more decorating because we just did little jelly plated cards. You can see that there's lots of uh, areas. If I want to use this whole card, I'm either going to paint it, stamp it, whatever to, to, you know, complete these. But I always like to do, and I've said this before, I like to do to make a little bit of a story, even if the story isn't completely understood by the person that's looking at it. This is how I view these kind of things. And I've said it a few times. And really, I think of it any kind of art like this. 
when a viewer is looking at the art, it's not even so much as what the artist, although sometimes it's something obvious, of course. Uh, let's just say there's a marriage scene of the husband and the wife and they're getting married and you got a painting of that. And you, you obviously can tell the story. But if you don't really know what exactly is the story's about, it's more about what you see as the viewer that mean what it means to you than even what the artist was trying to portray unless the artist left some kind of reference and saying this is exactly what each symbolism means and all that you it's like what you see in it what's in you will will is what you'll see so even though i may put a bird on it or whatever else that bird may mean something to me that it doesn't mean to you a bird may mean something to, entirely different to you but I like to do, I like, I like to have a, to, to have a little bit of a story on the card, a person, place, or thing, person, place, and thing. And the person can be a bird, can be a butterfly, anything like a living something. I like to have something, unless it's a landscape. I mean, uh, you know, there's a gazillion different ways of looking at it. But I'm just saying, when I make my art cards, I like to have a little bit of a story with a person, place, and thing. So the background could be, even if I just had, black with a planet that's a place you know um, a watch is a thing I like to have the element of time in my art and then something living to you know and so then you can develop it even more like you know you could put the bird on the car you know you could put the bird in the car I mean you know there's a, just a zillion different stories you could tell okay hi Carol again who else did I miss Jean okay so if y'all have any questions, put it in a cap so I know that uh, y'all are talking to me. Yeah, unless it's, you know, and even in a landscape, unless you want it to look really lonely, which usually that's what, uh, and that can be an indication of a, a story in itself, to have a landscape with no people in it, nothing living in it, it's going to look very lonely, and that's a story too, so... All right, so let me first show you some of the cards that we did about an hour ago. And we do this stuff, we just we just go with it. We're just, you know, think we just go with it. All right, so I'll just show you. These are some of the cards that we did in the Jelly Plate stream right before this one. And uh, if you want to see how they were all done and what we did with each one or how we made them, just go and look at the stream before this one. I love these. We did this with some metallic. And here's just a few small ones. Let me just kind of set those aside for now. There's a bunch of these. And the color's a little washed out. I'm trying to kind of keep it where you can see some of the vibrancy. And so these can be cut up, they can be used partially, all of it, a full background, make them smaller, use them, you can use these as uh, Project Life backgrounds. Uh, you know, I like to, it, most of the time I like to round the corners on my Project Life, I have this corner chomper, but these would be beautiful Project Life cards. So these are all just different ones that we and these were made with a spider web uh, cut out cameo cut out but look how they look like leaves 
love these. I think I'll use this maybe with one of that little bird there or something. And the reason I pulled out all these stamps is because I don't use my stamps like I should. So I'm going to try to make myself use the stamps. Rachel, help! Oh, here's some more spider web like from the spider web stencil. And then just some purple spiderweb. I think I went through all of it. Except we did do some uh, eight and a half by eleven print print offs as well, but they were over there somewhere. Here's one. That's this one. Okay. So I do have some collage stuff, and I use like calendars magazine images and i know people say well you know you shouldn't well i won't get into a whole controversy about copy I, I do not sell these i give them away they're just for fun i you know they're just my little um uh, my little racks my little random act of kindness so i just make these and uh i put them in my art journals which they're just for me and uh, the same thing for the cards. So, so don't email me. <laughs> okay. So I may or may not use some of these stamps, but I did want to show you the couple of the card ones. Uh, oh, and uh, did I show y'all since I hit record? We also did some uh, packing tape transfers with the jelly plate. Here's some of the packing tape. And I'm going to matte medium. Ooh, got the white one away. I'm going to matte medium the back of these so that they're not sticky. And then you can use these as strips of translucent um, paper, um, like uh, clear tape. Okay. All right, so there we go on that. Um, I think I need those stamps. I'll get those out of the way. All right. Um, oh, and here's the ones that we did the other day that I already did matte medium. Let me kind of lay these out so you can see them. So there's no tape, sticky tape part because I, I put a coat of matte medium over them. So you can see those as well. They're just, it's just packing tape done on the jelly plate. And we did those, that last set on the, show right before this. Um, <clears throat> what was it? Oh, I wanted to get a piece of paper to have something to stamp these off on. Let's get the back of one of these. <sighs> to show y'all, and I, I don't know how juicy this is anymore. I might have to, um, well, it probably wouldn't hurt just to go ahead and add a little bit refill in my archival ink pad because I, I just don't stamp like with all the stamps you'd think I would stamp more I used to stamp more all right um, all right so let me first show you this is the one that Lisa our Lisa here I don't think she's here right now she was here earlier she this was her very first hand carved and this is the way I usually do it and this is I think the way you're supposed to do it is pad to stamp and uh, I don't know if you put it on the block sometimes it's easier depending on the size I think all right so this is the one that she hand carved this was her very first I don't have any padding under this so we'll see how well it, I have the stamp pad over there if I need it we'll see but this is the very first carving let me do it one more time that she ever did it really does need a little bit of padding let's see Why are you closing your eyes, Jess? Because the way I stamp. All right. So there's the moon pie that <laughs> Lisa carved. Look. See the moon? 
the crescent moon and the moon pie. If y'all know what moon pie is, bless your heart. <laughs> so she sent me her very first hand carved stamp. <laughs> you ink your stamp, you don't stamp your ink. Well, isn't that what I was doing there, Jeff? I'm inking my stamp, right? Like that? But let me ask you this. If it's on the acrylic block, do you set the acrylic block down and stamp it? Just saying. I'm asking. I'm asking. All right, so there's that one. This is one of my hand-carved bees. I knew I was going to catch flack. If Rach wasn't here, Jess is. These girls that know they're stamping. All right, so there's my one of my little hand carved bees. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, here's a hand carved little wheel or gear. I got tons of them. I just didn't pull them all out. There's a little gear thing. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, here's my, um, I think, uh, you know, the neck on the violin. What else do I have? Do I have anything else hand carved right here? That might be all the hand carved stuff. That I pulled out. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of set that aside. I'm gonna set that aside. All right, and decide now what I want to do as far as the little story, and then maybe using some stamps. Put the lid back on here so it doesn't dry out. And then I did pull out. I love my. I call it my Dar ink pads because she sent me all the Ranger range of scented ink pads. A year or two ago, this I love the next to crayons, Crayola crayons in the box. Sniffing those, I love the smell of this coconut cream. This is what I do when y'all aren't looking at me. The same thing for my. Where is it? This box stays in the drawer. It's not for use. I have other Crayolas for use. This box is just for sniffing. It's relaxing. It's like, you know, some people like scented candles to relax. I could pull out my box of Crayola crayons and I'm as calm as calm can be. And in, just in case I'm on the road, Sister Woman sent me the emergency box, the travel emergency crayon sniff box. So, you know, you never know when you might need a sniff. <laughs> yeah, there's always rabbit trails on this show. What are y'all talking about? All right, so let's go back to the cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when y'all aren't peeking at me, when y'all just see my desk and my hands, I'm over there sniffing crayons. Okay, so let's see, let me put that back on there. Let's see what we can do. Uh, all I have right now is a bird head. <laughs> That's all we got going right now. Um, but I'm liking... Some of these that look like leaves like especially this one and like I said we can um, I can add more paint to it but I'm gonna try to keep as much of the of the backgrounds that we jelly plated that we can all right so I like that but I need a watch part I think I need a watch right there I don't like this one's too jeweled let's see what else I got picked out here 
This one's kind of cool. It's got more gearage than, oh, I like the gold one. The gold one might be good. All right, so. Now, remember to keep as much of the, oh, I hate that we're kind of far away. See, this is the problem with this camera angle. You can't really see a lot of detail, guys. I'll just have to keep holding it up. I've only got one more episode to film of the cat mural, and then I can get my tripod and stuff back in here and set up. It stays on, it smells like, kind of like almonds, almond extract. It's not my favorite. It's okay. Stays on. It's okay. It's not like my second favorite. <laughs> Sniff. Okay. So anyway, to keep some of the backgrounds, we, you have to cut out, fussy cut your images. Otherwise, if I'm just painting over them like I do with this type, you're going to lose all the jelly plating stuff that we work so hard to have. So, but I will want to kind of blend this in a bit. It can be with uh, water soluble pencils, or it could be with Neo Colors or some other, uh, you know, to kind of blend it in. Let me just do like an example. We'll just do a quick card here with this. All right, so, and also I'm going to still use my matte medium because this is. Uh, just acrylic paint the matte medium is dry this is dry the matte medium is not going to affect it at all so let me get a glue brush and I'm going to need another palette to put that on So we'll see what we can do here. A lot of talk, right? So I didn't close all the way, so I got a little bit of dried matte medium there. Okay, I did not close it. Let's make sure this is to work, that you close your, <laughs> your Dawn dishwater bottle of matte medium. Okay, so we just want a little bit at a time because these are small cards. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how I will... Uh, after this is on here, I don't want to keep trying to remember to look up at y'all, um, to take uh, a water soluble like an ink tense black ink. Some of y'all have been using the Stabilo or Stabilio, the water soluble pencils, but to me it's might as well, if I've already got ink tense, I'm not sure what benefit those are or uh, different, how much different they would be than the uh, ink tints. Maybe one of y'all can tell me because I haven't, I haven't bought any because I just didn't think, you know, there, if I have the ink tints, I don't know that there's much difference. Okay, so I'm going to put a coat of the matte medium on the card. I always put some on the back. And I'm going to kind of hang it over the edge right now because, uh, and then I'm going to, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the bird in there too. Let's go ahead and put the bird in there. Like peeking out of there. I don't want to lose that whole thing of. And then I put a layer over the top. I should put my craft mat back down here. And then just take a card and, sm and smooth it all out, get all the wrinkles out. And I'm going to just trim off the. Here. So what I'm doing here is kind of backwards from the way I usually do my art cards where I do the collage first and the paint second. This time we're doing the paint first with the jelly plated cards and the collage on top. All right, so let me dry this and I'll show you. Well, I do want something up here. I think what I'm going to do... I will get out some because I want to. I'm going to try to force myself to use my stamps. Um, let me get. I think I'll just get some gold. I'm going to get some gold because this is black right there. I'm going to get some gold paint. And uh, when you do use acrylic paint with your stamps, um, you want to make sure and wash them off when you're done. All right. I need a makeup sponge.
and uh, make up wet dry makeup wedges. Yeah. And I think I'll use a little bit of this checkerboard here, just along the top. I'll try to keep holding things up so this doesn't get too, uh, you can't see anything, it might get tedious. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the gold paint and just do a little bit filling in up here where this black See a little checkerboard at the top? No, you're not vacuuming, you're hoovering. <laughs> I, love this. I love to say the UK way of vacuuming, hoovering. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I just cleaned off the excess, you know, the wet paint with the baby wipe off the stain. If I use ink, like the archival ink is is waterproof so when I've this when this is dry it's not coming off and it's not going to clog up if ink isn't going to clog up your stamps like acrylic paint will so you want to clean out your stamps if you use acrylic paint now if you use like if I use this this is not waterproof so if I don't clean my stamp after using this the next time I go to use it I'm going to get blue leftover blue okay thanks carrie well we're just you know we're gonna see how it goes all right so now i got this little chick and this little bit there like that but what I, what my purpose of doing this was to show you although there's a couple things you can do to make it look finished you can go around it with like the gold or in this case <laughs> just take a dab of um the ink, I, this is what I do. <laughs> and I mean, I could just stamp it in here like this, you know, but I just put a little, so it's a little thicker. And on the little finger dauber, if you want to do an, uh, like a black edge, but I want to show you what I'm going to do here in a second with, uh, I've got to dig it out. My uh, ink tense black ink pencil. All right, so I just kind of go along the edge. right and you can put a quote you can put words you can make this a greeting card there's just y'all know y'all know the zillion things to do with this stuff i'm not showing y'all probably anything new maybe just in a different like sequence all right so now i know i have either in here or in here a black ink tense pencil so let me just kind of flip through here because i keep one to take with me because it's black and it's water soluble if i do go somewhere so let's see if i can find it it's easy to not see it you know it's got a rounded bottom to it instead of a flat sharpening one so it should be easy to see but of course, I'm not finding it. Ah, there it is. Okay. All right. So this is the ink black ink tints pencil. And what I want to show you is like what you can, same thing you can do with the Stabilio, Stabilo, how do you pronounce it? Stabilo. Y'all will know. Anyway, so I'm going to just go around the edge here of the bird and the watch with this, like that. And then get my water brush, one of them in here, Let's see if they're, yeah, they've got some water in that one. And just kind of, you can blend that out with the water brush because it's water soluble ink and then I don't know how comfortable I really feel saying it's completely permanent when dry I mean I think that's how it's advertised and it could be it could be a hundred percent waterproof when it's dry oops 
but it just gives it a little bit of a blendable blending in there. Just gives it another look. You go right across the blotch there, maybe bring that in a little bit too. go okay okay Paula that's the difference okay Paula is saying that the stabilo or stabilio <laughs> works over plastic and glass and packing tape so what's the difference between that and a china marker the china markers that you can write on glass with is it that china markers are not water soluble I think they're only a dollar fifty or something at Blick. Now I'm sure in Canada they might be two fifty, Linda, but I don't think they're that expensive. From I, and Blick sells them in like eight or twelve colors. I don't know how many colors they come in. Yeah, that's what I thought too, Paula. That uh, China markers are not water soluble. Okay. Well, anyway, this is this is pretty much all I need. I'm not like doing this on glass or anything, but you know, everything has its uses. There's purpose for you know all the different products. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, they're not water soluble. All right. So anyway, I'm holding this up and it's dripping. So you can kind of you know might do that. Put a quote on it. Put a word on it. Put a bird on it. So I'm just going to like just set that one aside for now. Um, if it, the other thing too about stuff like, you know, kind of outlining it like that, there's a lot of art journalers do that is they'll put words or quotes or sayings or whatever on their art journals. And, and, I, and Paula might be more pro, proficient at doing that because I'm not much of a word person in my art journaling or cards. I don't put a lot of words, um, but I've seen a lot of people do that. They'll have their little quotes, the cutouts, the letters, and they'll like uh, kind of shade around the words. It kind of gives it a little more depth, whether it be with a stabilo or the ink tents or chalk. I'm not, a, you know, y'all know I don't like to touch chalk that much if I don't have to. Okay, so let's go on to another card here and a couple, maybe another. Let's get a different one. Let's see. Okay, I like these blue leaves. All right, let's go with this one, just because I like the background of this one. All right, so what I can do here, now where's my, here's the paint that I was using earlier. Maybe it's still damp enough to pick up some of that. But like where some of the colors that I used in here, like that blue, let me find a stamp that I really like. Um, all right, let's go with this one. And I'm going to... I think that gold is good enough to just go with that. So I'm going to pick up, and I only I only need about half of it, but I'm going to pat out some of the blue paint there and stamp right along this edge, and then add a little bit more just to continue the design. Now, I don't want to leave acrylic paint on here, so I can either like take a baby wipe and clean off at least the bulk of it. You know, it depends on, you know, what kind of stamp you have and how precious it is to you. <laughs> but that's clean enough for me. It's like not crusted up. Uh, so I can do that. We can, I kind of like the designs on there. 
maybe we could uh, i don't know if we want to collage every single thing but that would be a cool one to do like let me get a white pencil let's just give it a try here if i can find one just a white um a regular white prisma prisma color which i think all my prisma colors are in the drawer over here <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'll put my snippables away. Okay, so, you know, sometimes we have problems with our white pens, although two of the pens that I've not had really any problems with is one is the Pentel Sunburst, which I think, I can, uh, some people say they can find it online. Uh, Staples used to carry it and then they stopped carrying it. It's a great white pen that didn't clog up, but I don't know where you find them anymore. Um, the other thing that seems to work well, I haven't tried the Wink of Stella products or the Moon something, same company. Um, is the um, hold on the gel the jelly let me see let me see the the glitter one hang on uh, hang on one second let me think of where it is okay hang on is the here it is. The star gel, jelly roll star gel. And these come in different colors. I might fix my little armrest there. They come in different glitters, but these do not clog as far as I could tell. They're the jelly roll star. Is it the star one? Yeah. And how you can tell, I mean, you're not going to be able to see from here. But on the cap, there's a little shooting star. And they're, these just really work well and they really are nice. Uh, it just depends on if you really care about the stamp or not. <laughs> I have to jump. Okay, Carrie, thanks for being here. Linda said the Wink of Stella is really pretty. And that's, and see, that's what I'm wondering how much different is. Although I guess the Wink of Stella is more of a brush tip and so you get more of a coverage than you would in a pen. But I love the star gels and they come in silver, clear. So if you use a clear over say a red Santa hat, the, it'll give a, a glitter to it, but clear. And this is a silver one, but that's the other one that works well as far as like a white kind of a thing. So there's that. Um, but I, the other, what I was gonna say is uh, using just a white pencil. I'm going to sharpen my Prismacolor here. I have a trash can right down here. Is to just a white pencil to to do designs and play with. So let me just kind of show you here. And it doesn't smear. Let me just do a couple little something somethings here. And you don't have to worry about it not going over acrylic paint because it will. Let's see, maybe I'll put a couple lines right in. Whoops, I pushed too hard. Hang on, let me sharpen it again. Okay. 
So you can just use a white pencil. And the same thing with adding, well, here, let's do this one here. Um, let me sharpen it again. If you jelly plate something like, oh, look, this one will probably be a good one as a sample. If you jelly plate a cool design like that and want to enhance it, then you can do that with your white pencil. And you can even color and shade with it. I'll do that in a second. Let me just kind of give you an example here. Just some more ideas of what to do with our jelly plating. All right, so kind of outline some of the designs, but then you can you can shade color. Instead of like doing black um, shading, then try it with your white. I mean, you could do it with any color actually, but I'm just showing you how it stands out with the white. And, you know, if you get it nice and sharp, if you get your pencil really sharp, you can do a lot of detail with it. Like, let's see here, I can show you. We'll go around. We'll almost make these look like peacock feathers here. Sharpen it again. Where's my sharpener? You can see how much how it, it creeps here. <laughs> Everything's creeping along. Then you can do more. I mean, you can get a lot of detail with a white pencil if you take your time and don't push too hard. <laughs> Let me do a little. So even if you your pen, if you can't get your pens to work over acrylic paint, your white pencil will. So there's a couple ideas to do with just designs that you uh, jelly plate and want to add some white to. You can just do it with a white pencil. Okay, let's see what else. Let me kind of put that to the side. I'm kind of doing like a little assembly line here thing. All right, let's do another collage something. Uh, I'm going to pick a different kind of card out. Uh, here, this one's kind of cool. This would be pretty if it was ac accented around with the pink or some other, because it's, uh, you know, black. So I'm going to take some of the pinky coral stuff here. And let's see if my, you know, if that's still too wet. I mean, uh, wet. So let me get a fresh one here. I'm just going to 
them around. And you could do the same thing with a pink pencil uh, around these designs. I got a little blue on there from the jelly play, but that's okay. So just to even make a pretty bright, cohesive. It just makes it more cohesive like that. Um, all right, for instance, let's say, oh, see all the dots in there? Let's take the pencil and, uh, and enhance the design from the jelly plate. Um, we used the pencil eraser here earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into pink. We'll do a couple little new designs on here. And maybe we'll put some pink dots in the circles here. And we can dry those and then maybe use a white pen to go around it some more to enhance it. I don't know. I just like to play with different things. All right, so I'm going to try not to, I should dry it with the heat gun, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and play. So you can, just to show you what you, else you can do with this. Other than just collaging on them and making a story. And we'll just make some new designs out of the jelly plated ones. And you could even enhance the squares so you have circles and squares, or just a few of them. Like that. And you can continue as much as you want, you know. I'm just showing you that the white can really be, you know, nice. All right, let's see what else we have here. Let's take one of uh, let's take one of these and we'll use this as the outer space. We'll have that start as our space theme. I'm already wanting though to take the white pencil and add some uh, like almost like these are glowing. Let me go around there. Like that. Do I add the white? And you can make some of these shooting stars. Let's do two or three of them there. And if I, you know, don't want any white there, I mean, nothing stops me from either inking it. Let's see if I have enough ink on this old thing. I'll probably need some paint. Just finish, you know, add some more. Don't need too much. I just need a drop. Come on. Just a drop on my finger. Just because these were what we jelly plated, and there's some just some areas that may not have got covered. All right, so now let's see. Maybe we have some, let's do a flower or something cool. I don't know. I just picked out a bunch of collage stuff to start with. So just to kind of finish the edge off there, we can add some more whatever, white dots, whatever. I don't know, guys. I'm just I'm just playing with what we did today. I mean, I asked y'all if y'all just wanted to mess around with these jelly plates, so that's what we're doing. But I do want to keep trying to use the stamps. I'm trying to make myself use the stamps. All right, um, let's go ahead, is that red dry? All right, let's go ahead and add red around this just to make it even stand out more. 
and we'll go with some kind of a theme with some maybe some flowers or something red. And this can be a background. Let me see. Just to give it a cohesiveness. I'm not much of a border person on my art, but that does make it pop. I know, just these are just little small touches. You can add stuff like this to, you know, a, a thousand different things, art journals or whatever, you know? I mean, just knowing that you can use a white pencil on acrylic to do cool things, well, you'll remember that, you know, when you go to do an art journal and go, oh, I need to write something, you know, and it doesn't have to be white. It could be light pink, it could be yellow, it could be anything. But, uh, okay. So let's see here, right here is a bird. Let's, let, me, let me get some, I got some birds here. This is kind of cool. The, I had cut the bird out of the middle of this for something, just the bird head. But if we cut out, now remember I got a fussy cut out if we don't want to lose all the detail here. Let's try to, let's see what happens if we cut out this bird without the head, just the outline and see what happens when we put it on top of that. Let's just play with that. It's going to be in two parts because it did kind of cut upon a thing. Let's see what happens. We'll do a few more of these guys, and then I guess I should go eat. I think I'm just going to cut out the outline there of the wings. We just use the wings there. I don't think I'll use that bird for anything. But now I have these wings that would be really cool as... Let's see how we can do this. Oops, trim. I'm going to make that round so it's going to fit inside that plant. And because I got a fussy cup, I don't want to lose all my detail here, right? So let me put my little bit of my matte medium here that I got still on the tray. Are. You got your your skellies and your skulls and your whatnot. Yay. So you can kind of see, you can just play around with different things. CB's never got one of my art cards before. Okay. <laughs> Jeannie, Jeannie gives away my stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do, um, all right, here's another, you know, just one of these cards. Let's go with some of the blue to kind of get rid of the, some of the edge there. Oh, got to get my pokey. Okay. 
I'm trying to keep as much of the, you know, what we did with the jelly plating without losing too much of that because, you know, that was a lot of work to do all that jelly plating. And so, you know, we don't want to lose all that design work, right? <laughs> Now I'm just picking up some of the blue here. There's a little yellow in there too. That's okay. I'm just gonna. So what I'm gonna do with this, uh, this one is along the border, is do like uh, instead of just a nice line, is I'm gonna kind of like, you know, uh, blend it out a little. So it makes it almost look like you're looking into a, like a little window thing there, a little door or whatever. So I'm just going to kind of blend it as much as I can with my finger and the sponge and make it look like, we'll see in a second. So now you can kind of see how I did the edges. See how they're all feathery and fuzzy? Yeah, and hands that don't destroy it. Exactly, CB. Oh, I'm glad you like them, Dar. I'm glad you like them. So yeah, and the same thing, you can do this around you can do it around an art journal page. You can do it on a canvas board. And then, you know, have another different focal point. I'm just talking about it as being a background. But you could do that around the edge of a canvas, an art journal page, cards, whatever. I'm just, you know, space can do it. Now, I don't know if we want something. Let's see what I can find that would be kind of cool. I don't want another bird. So let's see here. Let me go for my... Okay, another cool thing, if you love collage, let me try to look at y'all every now and then. Uh, another cool thing to do with collage is things that you don't think would be something. For instance, like y'all know I like my watches, and they can be a sunset, a sunrise. They could be a portal. They can be lots of other things. Well, the same thing, you can do that with jewelry parts necklaces, earrings, anything that's like, for instance, a big blow up picture, and, and fashion magazines are the best to find those things. Um, like, let's say you have a, it has a big blow up of an earring. That earring could become a crown, it could become a, a, uh, some kind of a shirt front, and, you know, it could be wings, depending of course on the shape and what it is. But big pieces of jewelry with gold and jewels and all that make amazing collage elements. Whether it be, like I said, wings, headpieces, uh, actual clothing. It de and it depends on the size of the jewelry piece and the size of your el other elements. Like, all right, for instance, let's go back to that bird. Let me go back to the bird here. Okay, let's go back to this bird for a second, just so I can kind of show you, for instance. Let me find something here, a good example. All right, here's just a good example. Um, oh, well, let me show you what it, look, there's these earrings. One's green, one's gold. I'm gonna take the gold one because it kind of coordinates with the colors here. So we're going to fussy cut this out. You don't have to use the whole thing. Use just the part that you really like. Like I'm just going to kind of go around the edges here of this earring. Just to give you all an example of what I mean. Collage is just so fun to me. I just, I mean, you just can't. It's unlimited. That's the thing. It's unlimited. If you don't think you can paint a crown or something you can collage it you can have so much fun and it just especially if you're an art journaler or uh you know a, a, any kind of you know keep track of anything i mean i know the people that do documented life I, I mean like i said i tried to do that 
I just, I, I, I still follow the group because I, I think they do amazing stuff, but to do it, <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't stick with something like that. Okay, so I'm going to make these little jewels. Uh-oh, I put that one off. Okay, I didn't always put it back. Let's just take that one off then too. All right. So I'm just cutting out a little bit here. And you can do all kinds of things. There's all different ways you can do things. Like you could put it like that. Oops, I know I dropped it. You could do it like, like a little on the little peak of his head right there. Look. You could put it around his beak like he might be. I mean, there's just a, all, you have to just play around with it. Take your little elements and, and do other things with them. All right. You could take this, these uh, jewelry earrings and they could become planets. Now, not necessarily on this particular card, but you get the idea. You can cut them down, trim them out as much as you want. Now, when I do stuff like this, though, I'm usually doing it on this method, where I glue my collage elements down first and then blend them with paint. It's a little trickier if you want to do something like this and blend it in, unless you don't care about losing everything you just did you know let's just put that up there that could be like a you see there's just all kinds of just don't look at that like oh that was an earring and i can't use an earring you know uh, the same thing for like if you use in fashion magazines, let's say you had a black and white check dress. You may not want the dress, but you may want the black and white check. <laughs> that kind of thing. All right. But to blend something like this into your, your uh, environment, I like to do that with paint after I've already glued the stuff down rather than vice versa, like taking the already done background and trying to add something to it. It's a little harder. You wouldn't think it would be, but it's harder to blend collage on an already painted surface. Yeah, but you can do stuff like this, you know, but if you want to do something like this, you're going to have to start with the collage and blend the paint into it. <laughs> Star, you're so cute. All right, so what I'm saying though is don't discount taking uh, elements. All right, for instance, here, let's take these earrings as an example. All right, so there's a pair of earrings there. But if you break those things, those, those down into different parts, let me find something I can use it on. Uh, let's see. It might get lost, the purple might get lost in that pink. Let's see, let's see, maybe this, let's see. I'm going to try to find something that it won't get lost on because I picked the element out of the air. Um, okay, here, one of these, okay. All right, so I'm going to just start with this little card here, just for an example. All right, so now I'm going to take, and I'm going to cut out, those squares and these ovals. So just give me a minute to fussy cut here real quick. Now you would think just by looking at the looking at the uh, image of the earrings that they all look exactly the same. 
But I'm going to show you all something here when you put them up against something, how each one has its own light on it. it each one looks like it's lit or glowing from a different angle. All right, so let me cut those out just so you all can kind of see. I'm just going to set them on here so you can kind of get the idea of how different they all look. Look. Now you can do a couple of, you know, there's all, well, a million things you could do with them. But let's just say we're going to do this. Do I want three? I think I'll just take three of those. And then where's my little squares? Where's my squares? Uh, up here. And I'm, now I'm going to cut out those four little squares. I don't know that I'll use all four. I might just use three. Just so you can kind of see. Things just can be so many different things. <laughs> but you just have to play. You have to just... And I'm not gluing them down right now so I can move them around for you. So I'm going to try to hold this up just so you can kind of see how cool that looks. You see? Well, the thing is, is you just have to, I mean, uh, 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 homework, okay? Remember I gave you homework before. Um, find, just find Go find a, a, a couple pieces of jewelry, a dress uh, pattern, just as a pattern, uh, you know, thing. Just go find a, a rooftop, a, a window, a door, and take those elements. Let me, get, let me find my one and only fashion magazine that I have right now, the Vogue, this Vogue one, okay? Try just to play and just to experiment and practice. Find a scene that has more scenery than, and that might be a little more difficult on a fashion magazine, but we're going to try. Um, okay, this is a kind of an interesting one. All right, so here's this girl sitting in a chair with an odd background. Now, well, maybe that won't be the best one. I really want a, like an outdoor scene where you could play with something more. Let's see. A fashion next. Oh, wait a minute. Here, I got a calendar. Okay, here we go. Let's find a scene here. Calendars are great, great things to play with. All right. Hang on, all my stuff is falling out of this one, getting away from me, as you can see. Let's see, I'm just going to try to find a scenery. Oh, it doesn't have enough. And what I would like y'all to do is to take a piece, of, all these are cut up. I really need to find one that's not cut up. These are all in pieces. Well, oh, let's just take something simple like this. Alright, so here's just a scene, like a a rainbow and a field. All right, what if you took, let's just see if I can find, what if you took, I'm going to find the oddest things I can think of to show you as an example. Right. Here's something, here's something, here's something. A little bit of jewelry piece here. Uh, hang on, guys. I know I'm just down here in the. Okay, here we go. We're just going to go with a, a bunch of odd things. Are y'all with me still? 
you're going, oh no, not this rabbit trail. All right, so let's just say you have, just take a scene. This is just for practice. It doesn't have to be a calendar. It can be, if you have a nature magazine, just a scene, some kind of a background. This is like, all right, remember like a sister woman plays with color forms? Uh-oh, her secret is out. <laughs> Anyway, it's like a scene. Remember when you played with color forms and it came with a scene and you had the little plastic people and the plastic clothes and the plastic flowers and you glued them all over the, or just put place them and they'd stick and you could peel them off and move them around. Well, I want you to do that with images. So just find things that you like. Let's say you like doors or windows, and I just couldn't find any right now because I did want to pick out a door or a window, but I just didn't have one right handy. But do things like, all right, for instance, here is a piece of a zipper sitting on, I don't know if this is out of a fashion magazine, I guess it is. All right, I'm going to take that zipper and here's what I want y'all to do though is I want you to, don't glue anything down. I want you to just kind of shift things around. Um, I don't really want to throw away, I like that rock. I'll keep that for another something. Um, what else did I have pulled here? All right, so here I have, where's my little scissors? It's easier for me to cut with the little ones, but I'll use these big ones if I can't find, there they are. Um, Here's a, an, a, an earring or a jewel. I'm just going to cut it out real fast because I want you to kind of see what I'm doing here. And this, if y'all don't say you have no imagination, if you play with stuff, I think so many people say, I can't, I don't know how, I don't have imagination, I don't have creativity. Not so much people here in our group, but you hear that all the time and it's just not true. The fact of the matter is, they just haven't tried, okay? All right, so let's just say, I'm going to try to set this up where we can, I think you can see it right there, all right? I'm going to do it upside down. So you have this big, look, it looks like a door already. A door under the rainbow. Oops, there's a little piece of that other thing there. All right? Look, the bushes are already there. Here's a door. Look, it looks like space already inside there. Can y'all see that? Let's see. All right, so look, you already got a story going right there. Maybe a jewel is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, here's a giant... There's a big giant piece of a tree. Y'all know I love my watches and clocks because I like to indicate time. So I'm just going to cut a piece of watch out here just to show you. Maybe that's right there on the top. Of course, it's not. You just trim it down. You just can play. I mean, you can just already start to get a story. I'm trying to get the goal. See? Y'all kind of following me? Dar wants to go. <laughs> Say, Dar. Oh, you know. You know, Dar. All right. So let's see. Um, what else? I'm going to kind of move some of this baby wipes and stuff. What else do I have for? Oh, now look. Here is a giant seahorse. You just never know where that seahorse might live. So just cut you out odd things that you may not think go with anything. But let me tell you all another tip, and I know I've told you all this a gazillion times. And again, guys, these are just things that work. They work for me. They work for a lot of people. You, I'm not telling you it's the only way. I'm not telling you it's the way. I'm telling you it is a way to spark creativity and ideas. But look, don't throw that away. Look at that. How cool is that? Just think of that in, in behind there. All right, so what I wanted to show you, though, is you could take 
do something like this. We could take that away and look. There's a whole nother story. That could be, this could be turned into a dragon. I'm just kind of trying to hold the whole thing here, guys. Look. You see? You could put, where's some of that jewels that I just cut out? Here. Put a jewel on his head. And then if you are one that likes to draw and paint, take this, take this seahorse slash dragon with the jewel on his head. You could have a, a watch part down here, or this could be over here. It could be at the end of the rainbow. This could be upside down like that. Let's do that. You could just take this right here. Well, I'm just trying to lay it there. I think you can kind of get the idea. And draw this. Sketch it. Don't tell me you can't. Try it. If you haven't tried it, don't tell me you haven't. <laughs> and, and turn this into a, your own painting. Don't, you don't have to make it look exactly like this. Think of this as your sketch for your idea. It could be the Loch Ness Monster. But the, the thing is, is take a person, place, and thing. But take many, take one place, like this calendar background, and just cut out all kinds of people, you know, something living. This could be a bird. It could be a fish. It could be a anything, you know, live. And take that with a few things and see what you can do and play with it. You know, you can just play with the different elements. Okay? So anyway, I'm just trying to give you some ideas of some things you can do for um, imagination. Okay? Turn, turn, just turn anything into a, in a little world. Just imagine if you were a kid. Um, can, can you even imagine a little kid saying, I can't, I don't have an imagination. Because they're going to make up something. All right. So let me see what else things that I've cut out here. All right. Um, here's a big, that might be a little too big for my little scenery here. But don't throw away things like these. This could be a whole world right here. All right. So let's just say. Instead of a field right there with a the rainbow, this is the, that's the field. Okay, you just change your whole landscape. Then what if you turn it upside down? You changed it again. Do you see little stairs? See how the, that uh, seahorse body is now turned into stairs? At the top of those stairs could be a million things. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, I'm having trouble <laughs> holding on to the slick stuff. Well, sorry, guys. You get the point. <laughs> Where are we? There we go. And then use this as like a jumping off point for more stories. Well, see, when did you stop thinking you were? I'm not saying you particular, Julie, but I'm, you know, in general. Okay, so um, here's this giant tree stump. You know, I mean, just play with different environments, different elements. Um, see? 
Well, anyway, those are just some ideas. If you don't think you have an imagination, go and cut out just random things and, and just play with them, move them around. Another cool thing to try in collage is taking, I like to do a person, place, and thing. Like I said, a person can be anything living. You know, that's, that's just, it just, that's a start of a story for me. It just gets me started with a story. Then you can expand, you can have 20 things and 50 people, or, you know, a person, a dog, a cat, and a, you know, and a dragon. I mean, you can have all kinds of things. Uh, you can intermix it all, but it, that's a start. The other thing in, if, to make your collage interesting is to have something big and something small. And I don't mean just necessarily one thing, not just necessarily one big thing and one small thing, but to have contrast. If you have something like this giant seahorse on the landscape, you've got something really big. And it, you see how it looks big in the landscape? It may not actually be physically the, as big, but it, it, that the small trees next to this big seahorse in contrast with the little rainbow and then whatever else. You see what I'm saying? How that looks so dramatic. Okay, any any questions or ideas or any any more comments? Um, all right, here's another thing, like there's this little post right there, little fence post. Well, what if you put jewels on the top of all those? It's Hubster. I'll call him back in a minute. He's going to go, you're still streaming? <laughs> he doesn't care. All right, so let's say we have little jewels. Now we're getting a little world here for our dragon to live in. Can you see? You can start creating your own little, even the fence posts are jeweled or beautiful. Anyway, all right, guys, I guess I should go. I'm kind of, you know, I probably should go eat. Been here another almost two more hours. <laughs> but then keep these ideas. I mean, even if it's just in a file folder or the Alphabetica, <laughs> file these away for future ideas. Now, you could just make something out of this, like an art journal or, or something, but why not file it away, or some of them anyway? It doesn't have to be 12 by 12. You can make them smaller to fit in file folders or whatever, but file some of these ideas away so that when you think, oh, I don't have any ideas today, just go get your dragon folder out, and here's this. And you'll go, oh, okay, I can paint a blue sky, I can paint a rainbow, a flat field with some grass, some little posts with some jewels on it, and, and just try, you see? Okay? Yeah, I know, I gotta go eat. And Jean's coming on in two hours. Well, I hope y'all got some ideas and enjoyed, you know, thinking outside the box a little bit. A dragon folder, yes. Everybody needs a dragon folder, Colleen. Everybody needs a dragon folder. <laughs> or a zipper folder. <laughs> a zipper door folder. I actually did do an, an art journal page with a zipper. And here's what I did with it. Let me just kind of show you. I'll do real quick. Jean's going to fuss at me. You need to go eat. All right, let me do something real quick. I, kind of similar to what I did. If I can find a Sharpie here. I'll just show you real quick here. What I did with the a zipper out of a fashion magazine, and I'm going to just kind of define this one a little more. It had like a little landscape here. 
Well, let me just go ahead and I don't want to take too much time. So, oh, here, there's some black paint on my finger there. Let's just go with that black paint. And then I did a little landscape in there and put some little people. Now you probably won't be able to see that. Let's see. See how it gives it a whole world? Just with a zipper. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. There we go. Let me put my glue brush in the water. And I guess uh, Paula said something about streaming tomorrow. Jean streams at, I mean, uh, four today. I've got a hot mess here to clean up after I eat. Okay, guys. So thanks for being here. We didn't use a lot of stamps, but. All right, guys. I'll probably send out uh, maybe a CB. And, uh, of course, Happy Die is going to get something. We'll throw out a couple of uh, cards in the mail. You all might be surprised. Okay. Bye, guys.